late at night and burglars are breaking in. Who else but the Cook Report would be there to film them? The boy taking the television is 13, his accomplice 10. All too typical of burglary in Britain today. I reckon over a thousand. Over a thousand jobs. Other than chaining him to the house, I don't know how to stop him. I'd like to talk to you about your activities as a fence. Suitably attired in ponytail and designer stubble, the Cook Report opens up shop. A second-hand shop to welcome thieves and stolen goods. And in they came. They were selling stolen videos, suits, lawn mowers, you name it. Do you like cameras and stuff? Yeah. Next, a stolen answer phone, soon to be returned to its rightful owner. Then came the offer of another stolen video and a description of how his accomplice operated. You don't give a Last video he has, he's broken. He's just come belting down the stairs and gone bang. FIFA. Today's young thieves will stop at nothing and no one. Evelyn Clark is 99. She's now recovering after a thief attacked her at home in her bed at two o'clock in the morning. Took me gold wedding ring and a cut bat. And he kept hitting me. And then I, all the money he got was 50 quid. Most burglaries are relatively small crimes. But add them all together, and you've got Britain's biggest crime wave. The tide is rising, and the thieves are getting younger. No, no. On our evidence, the police raid a drinking club in Leamington for drugs and stolen goods. The 15-year-old burglar we'd secretly filmed there sold us windsurfers' wetsuits. Yeah, it is all there. You spend that all on drugs, don't you? The rightful owner was very angry. These children who do these crimes don't realise the, the consequence of, um, you know, the personal feeling uh, or the hard work that um, you put in over the years. And they just continue, it seems, to uh, get away with it. Indeed they do. Someone had broken into the local school and stolen their computer. Our 15-year-old thief said he'd done it. How many pieces did you say you had out of there? How many, how many were there? The boy smoked cannabis as he discussed the newspaper report. The computer components, he said, would go to a certain second-hand shop just down the road in Warwick. Secretly, we filmed the young thief going in. He was to get just £10 for £800 worth of equipment. Hello, police emergency. We've got two youths breaking into a house. What's your address, please? A third of house burglaries are now committed by the under 16s. Alan Thugon coming through for you at Wigan. Many of their victims have been burgled several times. It's going to the stage, really, when you get frightened of coming on. It's just soul destroying, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Sell up and disappear. Quick as we can. Mm. Emigrate. In the worst hit areas, the inner cities, the burglars often live just round the corner from their victims. We filmed the police in hot pursuit, but we also wanted to film the burglars in action. This is a fairly typical, not to say archetypal, Manchester street. Very Coronation Street, in fact. And we were told it was the ideal location in which to demonstrate how easily these days burglaries take place. So we rented a house, moved in some furniture and some infrared cameras. And sure enough, within a week, the burglars arrived. The only surprise was their ages. The first burglar comes through the window. He lights a match to find the light switch.
the sound of breaking glass had switched on our cameras. Shockingly, the first burglar turns out to be 13, the second, still outside, just 10. The older boy has found a spare key. They move with confidence. Nothing is missed. The time has come to take a look upstairs. They're oblivious of the consequences of what they do. Robert Hadley, the owner of those wetsuits, has had so many burglaries he can no longer afford the insurance. One more and he's finished. It's an appalling but not untypical situation. Quite desperate. Um, it's driven me to the point of, uh, um, well, through the winter, we've both had to go out and uh, obtain other work to try and keep going, to the point really where uh, if I can just keep going for another month, then I may continue to trade. But otherwise, it's come very close to uh, shutting down. But in Bristol, business was booming. The Cook Report shop, rather obviously called RC Traders, quickly became a sort of Aladdin's cave. After all, there's no point in stealing unless there's someone willing to buy. In this case, a stolen mobile phone. And as he left, another offer. Buy Andal TVs. Some customers are themselves middlemen, like this man, who likes the style of one particular junior burglar. He's only a young kid anyway, he's like 14, 15. This man's a convicted thief with cases pending, but he was still selling credit cards we knew were stolen. Well, I left the counter for a short period of time, and when I came back, somebody had obviously jumped over the counter and taken my purse. As he talked, he confirmed the story, how he got his hands on her credit cards. The cards themselves, and here they are, were offered to us in our shop in Bedminster, so we bought them. Oh, good grief. Some thieves we were getting to know quite well. Darren Tanner, for example, kept on coming in. This time he was selling a camcorder, ram raided from Rumbelows the night before. His first conviction was at the age of 12 for stealing a Womble toy. Since then, the police have found themselves dealing with more and more youngsters who've turned to crime and followed in Tanner's footsteps. In this recently burgled house, for example, it was obvious from the method of entry that the burglar was no more than a boy. A very small person, I would say. Around 10 year old, because um, it's a very small window. In Sutton, Surrey, this ex-burglar used to be a small window specialist. Um, well, yeah, yeah, I used to get through the windows. I used to get through little windows about so big. I used to get through them. I used to open the door. I used to get in. I opened the door for them and I used to take the stuff and go. Didn't you feel bad about taking? Yeah, I did at first, but you don't worry. You, you didn't really worry about that at first because you think about it is them. It's about the money at first. That 15-year-old and his mate were part of a teenage gang, which, with some justification, called itself the Sutton Burglary Posse. How many jobs did, did you do? Do you know? Over the years. No, I don't keep record or anything, but there's a lot. Hundreds? Yeah. I reckon over a thousand. Over a thousand jobs. And how much money do you reckon went through your hands? I reckon, I don't know, at least two, three hundred thousand pounds, maybe more. The gang once burgled 23 branches of Woolworths in just one night. They don't care. They have no emotions about what they're doing. They just want the money, which they say they just fritter it away. But regrettably, to some, they're actually heroes. They're quite organised, they're the best around, like, no one could catch them at it. They've never actually been caught at it at all, they're just the best around. They've been caught on occasions, but, like, that nothing, is... like they've always managed to slip away and stuff. 
Across Britain, the public may be excused for thinking they don't have a chance. It's what an electric light man I'll show you exactly what it is. Okay. They also stole the money for her grandchildren's birthday presents and then ransacked the house. I think they're bastards who ever done it. And I think they ought to be given a bit more extra time. Now, Darren was selling a lorry load of lawn mowers. How many have you got? I mean, electrical? It's not that his memory was bad, it's just that there were so many mowers. His sales pitch was that we'd find them easy to resell because only the most popular models had been taken. GX2600. That's the um, great big ones, or electric ones. Darren Tanner at work, long-time thief and would-be wheeler dealer. I think a good example of how much money can be made by buying stolen property is the existence of almost fagin types, second-hand shops, dealers, who will virtually buy anything from anybody. Take trash and treasure in Warwick. Including our computer thief, in less than a week, a dozen known burglars came calling. The law is a bit vague in some respects in this area. Very difficult to prove offences against receivers unless you can prove that the property was stolen, you can prove when and where it was stolen, and you can prove that the person buying it knew or reasonably suspected it, that it was stolen. But in this case, we did get the goods on Charlie Smolt, partly from his own lips, when we offered him stolen videos. Nicked. Did not. I mean, yeah, but they're local. Um, yeah, probably. If I buy anything through here, do I have to have a name and address in the book? Oh, I'm Peter Pan. Well, you can call yourself what you like, but um, it's just in case, if the law come in, I, they say that to Nick. So I have to say, well, look, there's a name and address in the book. So, knowing his game and how he'd acquired the stolen school computer, we arranged to buy it back. Hello. I'll tell you what my daughter wants, but I... Don't... As it happens, the very kind of computer that Smolt has just taken into stock. Got a keyboard there. Yeah. With a printer as well. Thanks ever so much. Bye. And we took it back to the school. On the way, Charlie the Fence helped us carry it to the car. There was nothing upstairs in our Manchester terraced house, so the boys went back into the living room. In the far corner, the television, and below it, the video. Professional as always, they leave the light off so they can't be seen from the street. A long-serving magistrate blames the parents for the behaviour of boys like these. When I first started, there were no children under 10 offending in 1970 and now look at the number that there are so I got more and more interested because I looked into why they were offending I met the families saw the mothers that came to court with them and so on and I could see that they were complete people who really couldn't cope however senior policemen believe that the system may be as much to blame as the parents I think, unfortunately, one has got to conclude that even for quite young children, 10, 11, 12, that sort of age group, there may be some f need for some form of secure custodial arrangements, at least in the short run, to control this offending behaviour. What happens to them then, after that, is a matter for child care experts and so on. But they are uh, not doing themselves any good, and they're certainly creating a major impact for victims. The parents of these boys say they're going to sort them out in their own way, whatever that means. But as the father of a member of the Sutton Posse says, that isn't so easy. So how do you feel about all this? Terrible. Absolutely terrible. But other than chaining him to the house, I don't know how to stop him. I don't know how to stop him.
The Sutton gang even left their own calling card behind, including the number to call for help. They knew all the tricks, but they knew the law even better. When he found out that when he went to court, that there wasn't, because he was of an age where he couldn't be prosecuted any worse than what he'd already been prosecuted, um, they all found that it was like an open license to do the robberies. And they just carried on doing them. And in Bristol, the thieves carried on coming in. Darren Tanner went to Borstal as a youth, but despite 15 convictions for 33 offences, he's not yet been behind bars. Now he's hawking stolen suits. So what happened in this store uh, in January? Uh, on Tuesday the 25th, we had a break-in. and We lost about 45 suits, which was about £6,000 worth of stock. How did they get in? They got in through the side door. Um, they forced the door and bent back the bar and came in. They just ran through the shop very quickly, cleared out seven arms of stock, and then ran back out again in about six minutes. Tanner brought in one of the suits. And we took it back. Is uh, this one of the suits that went? Yeah, we lost 45 suits, exactly the same as this, in various different colors. And we lost all the Navy suits. And this is definitely one of the Navy suits that we lost. How can you tell? I can tell by the handwriting on the, the, the block outs. Darren Tanner, whose last conviction was for possessing counterfeit money, is an unrepentant criminal. Very different to one former professional thief who now fights crime in the classroom. This is a cell in Walton. See the difference? How many beds are in that cell? Four. One, He's determined two, to help because he sees increasing numbers of youngsters turning to crime. And he believes kids should be made to fear the consequences, which clearly don't trouble these youngsters. That kid's chewing gum. He's walking around totally unconcerned. And then after they've done a couple more houses, the younger kid will be the same. It's ridiculous. See, he knows. He knows where to look, see? He knows that there's stuff hidden on top of cupboards. So he finds the key. <laughs> that kid's got so much confidence that he's actually gone, realised he's got a key, come back and tried it in the lock. So who do you blame at the end of the day? Like I said, if there were no receivers, there'd be no thieves. But there will always be receivers. So why are they so keen on using or buying from youngsters? Because they're malleable. You can give a kid a tenner for a video and he thinks he's done well. Give it to a 21-year-old and he wants 50 quid or 100 quid. So it, it, it's, it's exploiting young people. In the club in Leamington, 15-year-old Jed openly rolls a joint. He admits he's paying for drugs by preying on property thanks to the money from fences. When, on our evidence, the police raided the Commonwealth Club, the licensee, a former mayor and member of the local crime prevention panel, who denied knowledge of any wrongdoing, nevertheless resigned as chairman-elect of the Warwick District Council, and the club is to close. Eventually, and with his mother's permission, Jed agreed to talk to us. When did you commit your first burglary? I forgot my first time was when I was about 10, 12. And that was a shopping patient. I just got purses, about five or six purses, and I put them down with jars and just walked out the shop. He and other youngsters have been Mr. selling Smoltz. to this man for years. I'd like to talk to you about your activities as a fence. That's what you are, isn't it? We've had you under surveillance for some time, buying and selling stolen goods. Have you? Yes, we have. What stolen goods would they be? A computer, for example, from St Mary's Primary School, which you paid £10 for and we bought back for £35. We've actually filmed you buying stolen video equipment from us. We've had you under surveillance long enough to see 12 known burglars come in here. Fruit nothing. But Jed was unequivocal. He knows how Smolt does business. 
If it's nicked, he'll give you a lower price, but if you don't, he'll give you a bit more for it. Did you tell him the computer was stolen? No. Well, he knew it was nicked, I'm sure he did. It's like, you wouldn't exactly get a BBC computer in your house, would you? So what are you saying? That you're a fence. Well, I'm telling you I'm not. It's as easy as that. Well, we have the proof that you are. We've actually bought back stolen goods that you bought. St Mary's Primary School have it back now, and are very pleased to have it. Have you ever been in the second-hand business? Yes, we have been, and we know the kind of people who come in, if you put the word about. The trouble is, they're prone to come in the back door, too. The irony is that here we are with a shop full of stolen goods, and what happens? We get burgled. They kick the door in, there's the lock, and they cut through this steel mesh here with bolt cutters. There really is no honour amongst thieves. What did you do with the money? I used to buy, like, clothes, like nice clothes. Uh, go out for meals, uh, take people out. Uh, go to Alton Towers and, like, Margate and that. Uh, all sorts of things. Buy cars? Yeah. I've got, like, friends have bought cars. I've bought a few cars. <laughs> The police go in after another young offender. All too often, there's no constructive motive for robberies committed by youngsters. The money, a tiny fraction of the real value of the stolen goods, is just frittered away. In the Manchester house, the TV and video are going that way too. I don't think anyone's ever seen a video of that caliber before. I mean, that is amazing. That tells me that today's society's got something radically wrong with it. Unfortunately, there's little agreement on either the cause or the cure. For the vicar who knows that ten-year-old, there's no answer in sight. I think somewhere we need to break into the cycle, really, that keeps perpetuating itself. Um, and there aren't any easy answers at all, but I think one thing we definitely need is more resources put into education and youth work for these children. And more positive, there's a desperate need for more positive role models, more, um, just more positive adult, adult influences that will be of a positive kind. And you just said... Across the country, the Darren Tanners of this world, cocky, aggressive and totally unprincipled, are the worst possible kind of role model. When we challenged Tanner, he offered to explain himself in the presence of his solicitor. At the appointed time and place, there was no solicitor and no explanation. Well, Mr. Tanner, you wanted an interview? Here's your chance. Wait till the police comes, you'll get one. Now, I want you to tell us about the stolen goods that you sold to us. Wait till the police come, they're on their way. I want you to tell Tanner disappeared into a pub and stayed there. Or brought into us. Is that right? Yes. First one steps you take. mate. As our TV and video recorder also disappear, is it too late for these two boys to step back from a life of crime? I hope not. Obviously, I fear that my fear is that something that it might be. But I hope not. I, d I don't believe it's ever too late. Challenged outside his home, Darren Tanner displayed his true colours. A small-time crook who never questions his criminal lifestyle but doesn't want to answer for it. In the Manchester house, a last word from the boy burglars. When they returned to find we'd removed anything else of value, they trashed the place. And there's little the law can do to stop them.